ugly close, down 3% on the S&P. The Nasdaq down 3.6%. It, it, it was pretty bad all day, but saw a lot of selling there into the close. Is it, what are you hearing from your clients and what are you telling them? So look, it, it's pretty brutal out there. Our, our clients are, are sitting tight because we ultimately think that there's no recession in the U.S. this year. And so ultimately, we think there's a market recovery in the second half of the year. But, but it, it does look like we have further downside in the next, in the near term as we head into a Fed meeting. And frankly, the war in Europe is very uncertain. And the market is pricing in a greater risk of recession and also just the uncertainty of how this actually plays out. So not entirely unexpected. I agree that the final flush has not been done yet. And I guess what's somewhat disconcerting is that the channel that we've been in is moving lower. Um, so yes, 4,100 needs to hold here. Otherwise, there's risk to further downside. Alicia, you said that, and, and certainly by the looks of, uh, of many areas of the market, uh, we are pricing in a somewhat elevated risk uh, of recession, or at least flirting with a consumer-type uh, recession down the road. It's obviously not there yet. But if you believe that that's not the likely outcome here, would you be actually looking in those consumer cyclical type areas or other uh, kind of economically sensitive ones to rebuild exposure, or is it not the time yet? So I think it's not the time yet. I think it's fairly clear that the lower end consumer is going to be a hit and hit first because of where oil prices are and just how that filters into the household budget. And we're actually starting to hear that from companies, that the lower end consumer is starting to trade down to private label. We do like travel and leisure here. And actually, I think the sell off is probably a great opportunity because I think if there is a spend budget, much of it will go into the travel and leisure sector. I think consumer cyclicals in a rate hiking environment remain risky, even as the stocks have come down. So housing and autos, I think, are still problematic simply because we do see rates going higher. The Fed, in the end, does have to walk a tightrope. And they're going to choose to fight inflation, even if we're in this kind of murky macro environment. I feel like we should not downplay the kind of moves we have seen in the commodities market lately. Yeah. Brent saw its biggest ever swing today, it reached 140 at one point. Nickel on the London Metals Exchange at one point was up 70% yeah. before coming back. Gas in Europe continues to surge. So ha have we ever been in an environment like that with commodities where we don't enter recession uh, because of an energy shock, a food, potential food sure. supply scare here? Well, arguably 2011, you saw something like that, where we, we were sort of seeing the aftershocks of the global financial crisis, and, and you did see oil surge again. And remember, never, you know, never forget, the ECB hiked rates in 2011 because they were afraid of what was going to happen with inflation and oil. Uh, yes, it was a mistake. I mean, look, the, the argument against it, as you know, is that we are not as commodity intensive in terms of you know, every unit of GDP as we used to be, and on a very, very long-term basis, nominal term, it's not very hot. To me, the, the bigger immediate concern is the kind of portfolio stress that it reflects. In other words, somebody was short all these things or somebody desperately needs to take, uh, to, to find the, the, the physical supplies and deliver it or to use it. And so that's the kind of thing, uh, Bono, I would love to have your take on this. Unlike stocks and bonds, which are pieces of paper uh, that people make a value judgment about when they decide how much to, to pay uh, for it or to sell it for, when you're talking about if you need the physical product, you're going to have to chase the supply almost uh, whatever the price is or go broke doing it. So what does that mean, do you think, in the short term in terms of uh, what, what the ripple effects are? Uh, well, in terms of the commodity market, Mike, I think you hit the nail really on the head here. You know, it really is supply and demand driven and trend driven. So there's there's just it's just a lot more uh, inelastic from a demand standpoint in terms of what people need as an input as they're producing whatever distillate or, or, or end user good. Uh, so in terms of there, you know, as long as this geopolitical, geopolitical headwind exists and persists, I don't really see how prices abate. Um, make, make no bones about it, whether it's wheat soft commodities or palladium and gas, hard, um, you know, other base commodities, they're coming out of that region that's having uh, this tension. So there's really no way around it. Um, in terms of how to play it, and you, and you alluded to it earlier, in terms of this being a trigger of uh, economic decline, I think what's unique about this situation is that the Fed really has little wiggle room in terms of what they can do, given the inflationary pressures and where, where rates currently are. Um, I think that sticks out to me.